how did the software industry completely redefine the term agile to mean anything but change? When you hear the word agile, does it cause you to roll your eyes or shake your fists in anger because it seems like a complete waste of time? Well, 30 years ago, when agile development first arrived on the scene, it meant something very different than it does today. Well, how did that happen? I'd like to help you understand how back when I started my software development career 27 years ago, Agile development was an amazing thing that really did very beneficial things on projects. So what went wrong? How is it that you can join a company today and feel like they tell you they're Agile, they send all the right Agile signals, but once you start working there, you look at how they work and it seems like it's micromanagement, it's just measuring people, it's super frustrating. If that's you, I want to give you some history in this episode today that'll help you understand what went wrong. How did the software industry completely redefine the term agile to mean anything but change? So first, let's talk about, do we even need agile development? What's the whole point of it? Well, 30 years ago, when this idea arrived, it was partially because companies couldn't respond quickly enough to the market changing. Today, think about how AI having been introduced to many of our lives and to the software industry, the animation industry, the marketing industry, it's disrupted many things. Well, companies that budgeted a software project, let's say a year ago, two years ago, and they planned all the stuff that they were going to do and just started building it and trying to measure how far they were, you know, along that budget they're spending and how close they are to delivering the project. When AI suddenly dropped, everything went chaotic and they had to replan everything. They had to start all over. And all that adjustment that has to be done is a big waste for many companies. Well, this is one of the big reasons agile development and all the methods around it originally came out was it was supposed to be the idea that, hey, how can we work together as a team building software so that the, we, we minimize the cost or the impact of the market changing? You know, companies that followed true agile practices, not fake agile, which I've talked about in other episodes, they're in the best position today with AI and all these other different changes that are happening in our industry to adapt to it without it costing them a lot of money and being as disruptive. So that's the first reason agile development, this is really important to understand how it went wrong, was created was to allow a company to adapt to change quicker. And I've done many other episodes where I've talked about how the backlog is misused often on projects. It's really supposed to be a, just a holding place for your ideas. But in many companies, it's basically just a locked in fixed scope list of what you're going to do its waterfall. And in that episode and the ones I've done about estimation, you'll also see, you know, why we're in this unfortunate situation today where many people look at agile and they're like, backlogs suck, user stories suck, you know, scrum sucks, all this stuff just seems like a complete waste of time. Well, it's because of what I'm about to share with you in a couple bullets here. The second reason we as an industry decided that agile development was even something worth looking at 30 years ago was a long history of over budget and late software projects. In the late 90s and mid 90s, there was a lot of media attention at that time about how many video games and operating systems and you know big software applications had been built up to that point where companies released them you know two to four times later than they originally planned and how many projects were getting canceled and you know similar to now we're experiencing all these layoffs there was a really tumultuous time in the 90s now remember there was a boom that happened around that time too but it was pretty well understood in the industry that if you worked in software it was one of the most unpredictable industries to work in so 
we as an industry decided, hey, let's look at this agile development thing as a way to deal with that. How can we prevent our projects from being so late? How can we spend less money and waste less money? And really, that's what agile development is supposed to do is you're supposed it's supposed to help you find out where you're wrong. I did a whole episode earlier in the earlier in the show called um, The Secret of Scrum. And in that little short episode, I talked about why Scrum and agile methods really what they're supposed to do is help a team find out where they're wrong quickly. And in a company where nobody wants to admit they're wrong, Scrum and agile are the worst possible things to use. So let's get into four key events that happened in the software industry that redefined Agile and co-opted the definition so that now it doesn't mean what it used to mean and is probably part of the reason why you're feeling gaslit right now. Am I crazy? I thought Agile meant this. This is what my company does though. Am I going nuts? No, you're not nuts. The first thing that happened is the introduction of burn down charts and velocity tracking. You may be surprised to know, but when Scrum was first introduced in the mid 90s, it did not have story points that you calculated and estimated. It did not have burn down charts or you know velocity tracking, basically seeing, hey, is the team getting as much work as they planned during, let's say, a two week period done as they predicted? That was added much later, several years after the introduction of Scrum. And if you think about it, if you're a company that is about to adopt this newfangled thing called Agile, again, 30 years ago, and you're nervous, you know that other companies in Silicon Valley and other players are doing it, and you don't quite understand what it means. One of the scariest things is if someone tells you, oh yeah, if we're agile, we're not gonna have much predictability anymore. We need to, we're gonna work in a way where we can adapt to change and get feedback, but we're not gonna be able to do quarterly planning anymore for our features. If you're an executive or a manager and you don't understand why agility is so important and why those two first points I made in the beginning of the video, we need to be agile in the first place, then selling someone on, oh, we've got this thing in agile now called a burn down chart. See, it'll, it'll let us plan and then figure out how efficient people are. That panders to management. It is not helpful to a development team. Think about it. A development team benefits in no way from knowing whether they're getting work done as fast as they predicted. In fact, it's the opposite. Usually it puts pressure on people to lie, cut scope, and manipulate numbers to look like the velocity you know, of their team is consistent from month to month. And if the whole purpose of Scrum is to learn that you're wrong, then the velocity in the burn down chart should be wrong more often than it's right because you're learning where your assumptions are incorrect and you're doing new tasks every sprint. You know, that's the thing. We're not working on an assembly line where we're putting the same four, you know, tires on a car and we can tweak how we do that. And from then on, every single time we put tires on the car, it's more efficient and we save money. No. Every task we get assigned when we work on a software development project is unique. So, you know, if you've been on software projects and you've been like, I hate Agile, I hate Scrum, I hate burn down charts, I hate velocity tracking, I hate estimation. Well, none of that was supposed to be in Agile originally or even in Scrum. It was added afterwards, even though you've seen it pro maybe on every project you have ever been on to pander to the desires of management, to feel like they have predictability and to feel like they have control so they can go out there and signal on the market, we're agile and do nothing differently. The second thing that really, really redefined the definition of agile was Jeff Sutherland's book. Jeff Sutherland is one of the original signatories of the Agile Manifesto. You probably heard of this. This was the document that was created back in the 90s that had, you know, a whole bunch of developers, top developers at the time got together. They went skiing 
And they came up with this list, the Agile Manifesto, like we demand that, you know, from from now on, we're going to we're going to deal with all the issues of the software industry by coming up with these principles that we follow. And they were really great principles. They really supported working together in a way that would solve those two problems that I mentioned at the beginning of the episode. But a few years later, Jeff Sutherland, one of the people who signed the Agile Manifesto, came out with a book, and it was called The Art of Scrum, Getting Twice the Work Done in Half the Time. Now, brilliant marketing title, but again, it pandered to management. Management don't understand that the reason that we came up with agile development is to find out we're wrong and to get feedback quicker and to actually do less work so that we do the right work. Management just thinks, oh, agile development is going to help us get the stuff done quicker. So that title to that book that Jeff Sutherland came out with, you know, I'm not trying to say he's not a brilliant man and, you know, he's not done a lot for the industry, but I think that really damaged the original intent of Agile in the industry by allowing managers to walk around with, hey, I know you're trying to tell me Agile means this, but here's this book by this expert. He wrote the Agile Manifesto and he's saying Agile is about getting stuff done quicker. So if you're going to argue with Jeff Sutherland, you know, you better talk to him because, you know, he's he's Mr. Agile is, is I think the way a lot of managers looked at it. So if you've been on a project and you've had to fight other people who basically try to tell you that agile means getting stuff done quicker, it doesn't have to do with adapting to change. One of the reasons might be they read Jeff Sutherland's book or even just the title of his book. And hey, if you're really frustrated with the state of the industry, I don't make these episodes just to rile you up. I actually make these so that you understand how things should work why they went wrong and you can adapt and fix what you can and you know cope with what you can't i've got a patreon and a youtube membership you can check out the link in the description and i've got over 70 people who've joined it so far these are all people who either are clients of mine i've actually done career coaching with them or they're people who've come in from youtube but we're all helping each other have healthier software development careers there's people in all kinds of roles management product management you know programmers people in qa and we're trying to help each other with the broken practices in the industry around agile coping with it better understanding better ways to do it seeing through the bs so if that's you if you'd like to have some community beyond just watching my episodes today check it out and join us third thing that happened that really just redefined Agile to mean something different than its original intent was the creation of the Agile certifications industry. At some point, somebody figured out, hey, we could make a lot of money if we came up with a certification that people take. And once they pass that certification, they can go back to their company or they can get hired in a new company and say, hey, I know how to be Agile. I actually got certified to be agile or, in, you know, typically it's in Scrum. You know, Scrum, as you know, is only one framework for agile software development. There's Kanban, there's, you know, unnamed frameworks. I mean, agile again, just meaning let's work together in a way that we can adapt to change easier. But Scrum tends to be the most popular version of agile software development. Well, you may or may not know this, you know, scrum.org is kind of the main website where the rules are sort of official definition of what Scrum means and is and is and what's in it started. And they have a guide there. It's a PDF called the Scrum Guide. And the Scrum Guide has evolved many, many times over the years, meaning just like the US Constitution or any other legal document, it's been amended, it's been edited, it's had things removed from it, it's had things edited added to it. It's had things changed. And over time, the Scrum Guide has had more things added to it to make it easier to sell certifications. I mean, if a company is like, yeah, I'm going to go send someone to get Scrum certified, and the person gets Scrum certified and comes back and tells them, hey, we need to do less prediction. We need to do less estimating so that we can be more agile and management doesn't like that. Well, they're not going to pay for people to get certified anymore. And so the Scrum Guide itself 
has evolved over time. Now, there's been some beneficial changes to it. Don't I, I don't want you to think I'm just completely harping that scrum.org is a waste of time, but it's very difficult to find original copies of the Scrum Guide or like a version history of every change that's been made to the Scrum Guide. I've used archive.org. I've done a lot of things to try to go back and find the original ones. Remember, I've been in this industry for 27 years. So, you know, I read the original Scrum Guide when it was in sort of like a draft state and all the versions between. I sure wish I would have kept them. I had no idea this was going to happen. But, you know, if you're seeing Scrum Master join your company and they seem like they're pushing practices on people that don't help people be more agile. They just help people be more micromanaged and really help the management, you know, predict things and control things more than the team get stuff done and adapt to change. That's probably because of the certifications being introduced to the industry and how the scrum guide has been changed over time to pander to management's desire for control. I hate to be the one to tell you. And the final thing that I think happened that really caused Agile to mean something completely different and kind of put the final nail in the coffin of most companies understanding what Agile development was really supposed to be about is the introduction of SAFE or SAFE E, depending on how you pronounce it. Well, if you're a team of management and you're about to adopt this new Agile software development philosophy and you've hired an agile coach or you just are talking to your developers or some other CTO who's on your board of directors and they've done agile somewhere else and they start telling you things like yeah you're not going to have as much predictability but you're going to be able to adapt quicker you're not going to waste as much money but you won't know how much you'll spend that's very scary to a person who's used to traditional world war ii you know kind of tailorist management and so a brilliant way to make someone feel less scared about a riskier, though better way of development, agile development, is to come up with a great name to help them feel safe. And what better name to help them feel safe than safe, the word itself. Now, safe or safety stands for scaled agile framework, but you know, if you look into this, there's these huge diagrams that show release trains and how they all sync up and everybody. I mean, it 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 really panders to, the, to that desire for management to feel like I understand everything. There's a process. Everything's clearly defined. You know, I can scale this out and I can build this giant project with, you know, 100 developers and we can call ourselves agile because we're using the scaled agile framework. But again, SAFE has you know, um, there's certifications, there's people who do consulting in it. Uh, I don't want to say it. That it's not, you know, I want to say it, it may be worse than Waterfall, in my opinion, but it's not the worst framework out there. But there's a video that's been on a playlist I have on the channel. You may or may not know this. I have a playlist called Jamie's Favorite Software Development Videos, where I put you know, random videos about software development over the last seven years that I want to share with you that you can get to on the channel. And I, it may even be the first video on there. There's one from Jez Humble, and he was the author of Continuous Delivery, along with Dave Farley, who has a channel here called Continuous Delivery on YouTube. Great channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, go check it out and sub to it. But Jez Humble has a video, I believe it's called Why Scaling Agile Doesn't Work. And if you watch that video, he does a fantastic job explaining why if Agile is supposed to let us adapt to change, well, the more people we add on a project, the bigger the scope and the more interdependencies, the less agility we have. And so this idea of this, this dream we have that, hey, we can scale Agile, it's marketing. It's not reality. And so safe for this, you know, safe E framework, it really is a framework that, again, panders to management and it helps them feel like I can take a giant project and plan it the same way, have upfront requirements, you know, split people into teams, front end, back end, manage dependencies between people, just like we did back in Waterfall in the 90s before Scrum and still call ourselves agile. And the net result of all these things I'm talking to you about today is, again, 
Many people have never even been on a truly agile project. Their entire experience in their whole career from the time they went to college and maybe they're 15 years, maybe even 20 years into their career, every project they've been on that's called itself agile has experienced, unfortunately, uh, its origins in one of these lists of these four, these four events that I talked to you about today. So I say this today to just get you to think, you know, is is adapting to change on a project really valuable? Do we need to respond to market forces? I think you know the answer is yes, especially in the wake of AI, but there's other changes that are gonna happen in our industry, right, that we can't even foresee yet. So having the ability to be agile is not gonna go away tomorrow. We need to be agile. What we don't need though, is to let companies and profiteers redefine agile to mean something it never intended to mean, to find ways to make money off of it, to profit off of it, to give management more control in areas where honestly, it's not good for them to have control. I'm not anti-management, but I'm anti giving management feelings of safety and control where they don't actually have safety and control, which, you know, if you've watched any of my other episodes on estimation, you know, that's a big issue that I think uh, uh, is very similar to Agile and that it gives management a false set illusion of control. So do you feel gaslit by the software industry's redefinition uh, of Agile in these ways? What are you doing to try to fight back against it? What are you struggling with? Leave me some comments. Until next time, thanks. Mm -hmm.